What are my short and long-term goals? Where am I in terms of those goals? And I also just really like to hone into the intuition that I have and that we all have. Hi, Envisionaires. Welcome to the Envisionaire podcast. This is the podcast where we envision living our best lives by exploring everyday topics related to health, wealth, and community. You might remember the solo episode I did in season one, episode eight, where I talked about how it's never too late to pivot your life into the direction that you want. So today, this is basically a part two to that episode, and I'm going to be setting out my thoughts as to when I think it's the best time to actually take the plunge and pivot. And this is based on some questions I received from Envisionaires asking, well, telling me actually that they had done their life audit and they had, they knew that they wanted to pivot, but they just actually didn't know when the right time was to pivot. Also, I'm super excited to announce that I have created a life audit booklet, which is essentially a six page document that sets out all of the steps that I take whenever I'm doing a life audit. And it's basically helped me in the past. And I'm actually offering this to all Envisionaires out there who want to have their own booklet that they can go through and use whenever they want. And it's really, really easy to use. Please feel free to go to my website, www.nicole, and I see O-L-E, Ningyuan, N-G-Y-U-E-N.com. And you can download uh, that free booklet there. And please do, if you do download it, please do let me know how it goes. And hopefully it really does help you guys. Okay. So let's dive into the topic today. How do we know when we actually want to pivot? Sometimes it's a no brainer. Like you just know that you need to take action. That could be because you have some goals having to do with getting healthier, building endurance, getting better sleep, finding love, anything like that where it's essentially a no brainer. Yes, I have to take action, right? Because you've done your life audit and you realize that those are some areas in your life under health, wealth, or community that are really missing. So obviously then you can use the the skills that we talked about, which are visualization, goals, and also, you know, basically affecting a plan and putting a plan in place. So you can take all of those steps and then basically take a, make a change, make the pivot in your life. That's great. That's easy. But what about those times when you are, let's say you have a toxic work environment or a toxic friend or family member who's like an energy vampire and you're just struggling to be around them, but you're kind of forced to be around them. What if you're in a really toxic uh, relationship, but you still love your partner and you want to try and see if you can make it work, but you're still also maybe thinking about, you know, breaking up and and making some, again, these are big life decisions. These are situations where if you did nothing, things would stay the same, but slowly you would start feeling a sense like you're losing yourself, you're out of control, or even worse, you could feel like you're betraying yourself or your values. So sometimes you want to pivot, but you just don't know when actually is the right time to pivot. Here are three things that I do on a regular basis whenever I'm facing a really big life pivot and it's really, really helped me to kind of get through and make the decisions at the right time for me. The first thing I do is I like to take reflection and do some meditation. I really like to go inward and really take some time to ask the universe for help and guidance. And I'll often sit quietly and really try and reflect on the decision and actually the timing as to whether it's the right time to do to take action now or whether it's better to wait a little bit. And when I'm doing that, sometimes I'm thinking questions, for example, what are my short and long-term goals? Where am I in terms of those goals? And I also just really like to hone into the intuition that I have and that we all have actually. And oftentimes I will get a sense of direction and it's actually really powerful and it's really helped me to make decisions as to whether to wait or actually just start taking action or even small steps towards the action. 
The second thing I do is I love to journal. Even though I do the, the reflection and meditation, I then really like to do the journaling because for me, when I journal, it's like all of a sudden my thoughts can come alive and they become so much more clear that way. And if I'm actually really still struggling and I'm not getting a clear answer, which sometimes happens, I like to do a pros and cons list. And, but I like to do it in terms of like taking action now. So pivoting right now versus waiting a few months and pivoting then. And so I guess what I like to do is pros and cons for now and then pros and cons for down the road. And actually seeing that, it helps me really map out the benefits of, of taking action now versus later, but it also allows me to look at the, the challenges and maybe some of the consequences of doing this now, like taking action now or waiting. And when I'm journaling, it also allows me to kind of set a timeline in, in a way and and consider like taking effect now, whether or not, I guess there are things that are going on in my life that either could expedite it or could actually slow me down and or create more challenges. And so I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was thinking about starting this podcast, it was during lockdown, but at, I also had um, a lot of other huge life stuff, ha stuff happening at the time. And so I was engaged and planning a wedding during lockdown, which was very stressful. I was working a full-time job and I was also, I had my dad's health that was declining and obviously I was in a different country. So there was a lot of other things that I felt like were, you know, I needed to give a t greater attention to. And so in that situation, you know, starting the podcast at that time felt way, you know, it just felt like I could start it and I definitely knew I wanted to, but in the grand scheme of things, it probably was just going to add more stress and it just, it wasn't feasible given all the other things that were going on in my life at the time. So that's an instance where I really do like to like put, you know, pen down to paper, journal my thoughts, and then also think about the pros and cons, and then also like a provisional sort of timeline as well. And it, for me, that really, really helps. And I actually often come away, even though I might say, okay, maybe now's not the right time to pivot. I know to myself that, okay, now's not the right time, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that right now I have to just focus on other areas of my life. And I really find that such an empowering step. So for me, that's, that's always been something that has helped me um, in terms of journaling. The third thing I like to do is I also like to talk to someone who I trust. I really find it helpful to talk to someone who I know has my best interests or has best intentions for me and my interests. I also like to talk to someone who I know is non-judgmental and also someone who I feel like will have time to run things through with me if I need to. This is often now my hubster, but it has also been different times in my life, my family, some of my girlfriends, a therapist. It really just depends on where I am in my life at the time. And I've always really found that the sounding board is super helpful as like a final step, essentially, to make sure that I am making this big life pivot at the right time. Once I've done all these steps, I feel very confident that um, I've made the right decision either to take the plunge and pivot now or wait you know, a little while and pivot at the right time then in the future. And then I obviously then would move on to steps two to seven of the life audit. Um, and so, and that's when I start putting into effect the, you know, the brainstorming, the visualization, the planning, all of that, all that stuff that we talked about um, in season one, episode eight. I know it might be a scary move to go ahead and do a big life audit and there may be challenges that you might need to overcome, but try to remember that these are just opportunities that are lying in every challenge that you face. And then just try to take one step at a time and trust the universe that things are happening the way they're supposed to. This has often helped me along the way. I hope this episode has been helpful to anyone who's who's facing a life pivot, a big life pivot, pivot, 
but has been feeling unsure about timing and what to do and how to actually just make a decision as to when to pivot. Please do let me know if this episode was helpful to you and you are planning a big life pivot. I love to hear your story and just share with you ideas as to how you can pivot your life. Lots of love and visionaries. And remember, every day offers us a new opportunity to start living and envisioning our best lives. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe and check out this video here.